Hello dear my friends and welcome to my first ever unboxing video. I have quite a stack here but the good thing is uh, they all came in one box instead of different boxes so we won't have the satisfaction of doing the um, sound but we're, we're going to make sure that we get it right the first time. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna have my first injury here. Um, so. In total, I have 10 books and this first one uh, I think has four books in this big box. So there's no way I, I would be able to catch. Oh my god, that was so satisfying. They're so pretty. So many. Okay. The first book that we have is called What You Are Looking For is in the Library. This is by Michiko Aoyama. And this is a very cute Japanese translated fiction. This one is a hardback. Ooh, I love the burnt orange color. It's very cute um, and perfect for autumnal weather. Okay, so no French flaps for this one. And what is it about? Now, I'm going to be very honest with you. When I bought all of these books, I read them and uh, I read the synopsis of them and then I remembered them, but I have forgotten everything about them. So what you're looking for is in the library, which is very true. You should go to your local libraries. Um, but aside from that, this book is about, this book is set in a library and there is a librarian, her name is called, she's called Sayuri Komachi. And she is the perfect librarian uh, in a sense that she recommends a book which exactly fits the person. So when she gives you a book recommendation, it's not just a book recommendation, but it is the perfect book that you are looking for. So she recommends um, a couple of recommendations to a different set of people and then the story unfolds and we see how they were the perfect books for them and what the whole story unravels from there. Okay, so the next book that we've got is called The Swift. This is by Ben Lincoln and, and this is illustrated by Claire Powell because this is a middle grade book. Just look at these illustrations. They are so cute. And on the day they're born, each Swift is brought before the ancient family dictionary. They're given a name and a definition, and it is assumed they will grow up to match. So we meet Shenanigan Swift, and she has other ideas. And can we see Miss Shenanigan here? And there's a cat. It's so cute. So someone is going to try to kill her latest aunt. Her name is Schadenfreude, which um, is a German word. Um, and we're going to learn what that means. We're going to learn who is killing them and Shenanigan is going to solve this mystery. Exciting. The next book that we have is called Strange Weather in Tokyo and this is by Hiromi Kawakami. It's translated by Alison Markin Powell. One night when she's drinking alone in a local bar, Sukiko finds herself sitting next to her former high school teacher. Yeah, okay. Over the coming months, they share food and drink sake. And as the seasons pass from spring cherry blossoms to autumnal mushrooms, hmm. Sukiko and her teacher develops a hesitant intimacy that tilts awkwardly and poignantly towards love. I have heard excellent things about this book and this is actually a recommendation from Christiane Jones. Um, and I, I really like the sound of it. So that's the third one. And the last one in this box is called The Housekeeper and the Professor. And this is by Ogawa. It looks so pretty, doesn't it? It has these beautiful French flaps like so. Oh, it has baseballs. It has baseballs in its, um, and as end papers or is it back cover? I don't know, whatever. 
um, this is a vintage classic edition and it is very very pretty who is it translated by this one is translated by Stefan Cinder and this is a story about a professor but he cannot keep his memory for more than a couple of seconds I think how exactly does a man live with only eight minutes of memory so he can only live with eight minutes and this is a very interesting premise for me every morning the professor and the housekeeper are introduced to one another because of a head injury 17 years ago the professor has an eight minutes memory although he may not remember what he had for breakfast his mind is alive with elegant mathematical equations from the past he devises clever math riddles based on the housekeeper's shoe size or her birthday and the number reveals a sheltering and poetic world to both the housekeeper and her 10 year old son which need, which, with each new equation, these three souls forge a bond that runs far deeper than memory. Mm, that's so wholesome. Well, I also have a memory problem, so I would love to know how the housekeeper solves that. Um, but unlike the housekeeper, I'm not a mathematical genius. Um, so maybe, let's see. Time to unwrap the next box. Are you ready? One, two, three. We try again. This time from the other end. One, two, three. And I still managed to... It's still not open. Can, can you see this thing? It's still, it's, it's still got... <sighs> Whatever. I'm gonna pretend it was good. Okay. So, we have... Oh no. It's dented. This book is kind of like a psychological thriller book. It's called The Woman in the Purple Skirt. And this is by Natsuko Imamura. Imamura, and it says disquieting and dryly funny a taut and compelling depiction of loneliness and obsession which is exactly why i bought it this is translated by who is this translated by Okay, it has pages and pages of appraise. This is translated by Lucy North, and this is a Faber uh, publication. So, um, I want to become friends with the woman in the purple skirt, but how? The woman in the purple skirt is being watched. Someone is following her, always perched, just out of sight, monitoring which buses she takes, what she eats, whom she speaks to. But this invisible observer isn't a stalker. It's much more complicated than that. That was like a good time, very autumnal, very on brand. And then we have, wow, I love these. I absolutely love these. It has a card to me, by me, for me. I call that democracy. <laughs> so we got a bag. This is called Diary of a Void. This is by Emi Yagi, and this is translated by... Oh my god, this is so cute. Can I just take a moment to appreciate how cute this, this is? Hang on. See how, how cute this is. Okay, who is it translated by? Can we see that? This is trans... Oh, this is translated by... Lucy North again, so, um, and there's David Boyd, who's the assistant professor. Is he also the translator? Next book that I bought is called The Cat Who Taught Zen. And the only thing I know is that this is by the same author as uh, Big, Big Panda, Tiny Dragon and Big Panda. And I love those books. They are the most wholesome books that you can ever have. This is um, illustrated by... So I think this is illustrated by the author himself. These are full of... Oh my god, there's a, there's a sleeping cat at the end. Can you see that? Wait, you can't. Okay, 
Can you see that? Okay, I love cats. If if that is if that wasn't clear. <sighs> okay, I'll I'll stop. I'll stop showing you every single cat. So basically, these books have an illustration, and under each illustration, there is something written over there, which is very profound and thoughtful, and it's very simple. And these simple words with simple illustrations through the eyes of the cat, you are kind of given comfort in, in this small book. And it's very easy to read these books because they are so comforting and so easy to read through. Their messages are not like, oh, you should do this to do have a good life. No, it kind of, it kind of can be interpreted by every single person based on what they are going through in life and in, 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 in general. For me, these books hold a very, very close place in my heart because they give me comfort when other things cannot. And it's a very special reading experience. Also, this sticker can be removed. So, um, but I'm not going to because it has the big dragon and tiny, no, tiny dragon and big panda sticker. So it's very, very adorable. Uh, and I have both of these books. Um, so the cat who taught Zen. The next book that I have is another translator fiction. Um, this is called Days at the Morisaki Bookshop. And this is by Satoshi Yakisawa. This is translated by Eric Ozawa. We got the library and now we have a bookshop. From the beginning of summer to early spring, I lived in Murasaki bookshop. I spent that period of my life in a spare room on the second floor of the store trying to bury myself in books. Don't we all? The cramped room barely got any light and everything felt damp. Nope, my rooms are very light and airy. It smelled constantly of musty old books. But I will always remember the days I spent there because that's where my real life began. And I know without a doubt that if not for those days, the rest of my life would have been bland, monotonous, and lonely. The Morisaki bookshop is precious to me. It's a place I know I'll never forget. That is so wholesome. This is basically the story of a young student and she is going through some tough things in life as a high school student. I think she recently broke up with her boyfriend or something and then she lost her job. So she's, she's going through a lot of things. I'm not even sure if she's a high, high school student, by the way. Um, so she's a young girl. And then her uncle who has this bookshop, he, um, he asked her that why don't she come and work for him or why don't she just come and stay at the, at the room upstairs on the bookshop and in exchange she doesn't have to pay rent but she can just help him with the store they solve their own problems and they both find companionship and um find ways to deal with life and that's a very very wholesome book i hope i'm hoping it's a very wholesome book so the next book is one that i have already read it's called masters of death i'm going to have a moment of removing the sticker. Wasn't that satisfying? Okay, so this is a, this is a book that I've already read, but I loved it so much that I just have to have it. First of all, it's so floppy. And second of all, it's about a vampire, but she is not just any vampire. She is a real estate agent and she's trying to sell this house. But her house has a little problem, that is that it's haunted by this ghost. And she doesn't know why he's haunted. She doesn't care if why he's haunted. He just she just wants her him to go away so that she can sell this house. And this ghost or the poltergeist does not want to leave. And he does not want her to sell the house. So he creates a lot of problems. So she goes and she finds a medium who happens to be a fraud and um, she asks his help to solve the problem so that she can sell the house and the poltergeist can go away and everybody gets a happy ending. But will everybody get a happy ending? The medium is actually the godson of 
debt. So he's not exactly a complete fraud, but he's a complete fraud. Um, but he's not a real medium. So um, we're going to have some drama. Again, a very, very fun book. If you haven't read this, I highly recommend this. Even if you hate the Atlas Six, if you like the Atlas Six, you hate the other books. For me, Olivia Blake is a very complicated author. I have read her other works. I love the Atlas Six. I liked the Atlas Paradox. I cannot wait for the last series. I hate it, absolutely hate it, Alone With You in the Ether. Um, the one for my enemy, I have a very mixed relationship with that. Like in the beginning, first 50%, I loved it. The, the last 30%, what the hell? What the hell was that? And the ending, I'm gonna pretend that didn't happen. So I have a very complex relationship with Olive Blake. But this book is very fun. Um, the dialogues here are a little bit cringy and I wish the editing was done pro properly, but this is not a review, it's just a haul. So read this. And finally, the last book that we've got is actually a little graphic novel. It is called Loving Reaper. It has two short stories. One is called Black. Okay, so the next book is, I think probably it's one of my favorites. Um, this is a graphic novel. It's called Loving Reaper by Jenny Jinya, and it is absolutely beautiful. This actually has two short stories. One is called Black Cat, and the other one is called Good Dog. The story is about this grim reaper who finds this little cat and he thinks he is unlucky because he's black in color and this little dog who thinks he got abandoned because he was not a good boy and the grim reaper is going to find them uh, homes so that they will have their happy ending and the illustrations are so so pretty um when I first saw this book, I couldn't, I couldn't stop reading it. I'm trying to find, a, find something that doesn't spoil it because they're so small that they can easily be spoiled. But look at the start of this story. It is really, really beautiful and pretty. And look at that. It's really, really cute. And very heartfelt so i would recommend having a bunch of tissues at hand while reading this because um this is very um heartwarming and wholesome but a tearjerker so tissues this is called loving reaper and that's it that's the end of this video so i guess i'll see you in the next one now i'm just gonna go and choose which one of these books am I going to read first? If you like the chaos, please consider liking this video and subscribe for more because more videos are gonna come very, very soon. And I will see you in whatever comes next. That's it for me today. Trading Pages, signing off. Bye.